Good evening viewers, those who are watching within Uganda and in the diaspora, we are glad that you have made NTV, your number one station, and also NTV People's Parliament, your favorite program. It is the only program that gives Wanainji a platform to speak about issues that affect their everyday life, affect their communities, or affect their country. We are in Kampala to discuss yet a very, very important issue that do not only affect Kampala, but the entire country. And this is how we can create safer cities for our girls. This is People's Parliament chaired by none other than Agnes Nandutu. Good evening, honorable members. You are welcome to NTV People's Parliament. We are here to discuss a very important topic that affects our girls. Each one of us is a parent. And we want to see how we can create safer cities for our girls, most especially in Kampala. How can we ensure that Kampala is safe for our girls? But before I get the ball rolling, I would like to invite our partner, Plan International, to give us an overview of what they have discovered. Please, you have the platform. I'm the head of programs at uh, Plan International Uganda. Plan has been operating in Uganda since 1992 and for over 20 years has been involved in urban programming. PLAN globally strives to advance the rights of children, especially the girls. In Uganda, we have done programming both in rural areas, eastern, northern, and uh, northwest, including uh, in uh, Arua and uh, Ajumani, responding to the emergency uh, situation. Okay. Specifically speaking uh, about uh, urban programming, Madam Speaker, Kampala is host to a very big population. But what has been the effect? A very big population living or working within limited constraints of resources that goes both affecting those who live in the upscale uh, of Kampala, but also in the, what I refer to as the lower scale, in the divisions. Plan is operating in the five divisions of Kampala, Lubaga, Machi, Indian, Nakawa, within the central division, to mention but a few. But when you talk about safety for girls, there are a host of safety issues. Plan has been implementing this project of uh, safe and inclusive cities over the last three years. This particular intervention is happening in a, another number of cities across the world. But speaking about Kampala, their girl, adolescent girls face issues around mobility. As they leave home, either to go to school or search for opportunities. Within the transport sector, they are finding challenges. We have documented a couple of instances where girls are facing challenges. On the road, in the taxis, on the border border, even as a pedestrian, people making a lots of signs shouting at you, which causes demeaning to the young girl. We have worked over the last three years with the Kampala State Authority. We have worked with the divisions, uh, the political leadership, and key civil society organizations with one sole aim of trying to address these particular issues. Mm -hmm. And Madam Speaker, today we bring this to your attention mm -hmm. to amplify the voice so that their voices are heard mm -hmm. and we all make the city safe for girls and every one of us. I'm Dr. Emmanuel Serunjo Wedembe, the mayor of Kawempe Division. I want to commend Plan International for having come up with, uh, with such a program. Yeah, statistics tells us that by 2030, under uh, urban agenda research, 70% uh, of all people will be residing in urban settings in cities. So we city leaders, we have to plan for that. Get ready for that. 80% of the residents of the population we have 
a youth. So it means you have, you contribute a bigger percentage of people who are in city and of people who have been seated by, by 2030. And when it comes to making cities safer for all of you, you should be keen on the younger people and work on the problems they are facing. We know you are facing a lot, but KCC and the government of Uganda, we are trying hard to make sure that at least most of those problems are eliminated. And we have a number of programs to work on those issues. But the problem, information, dissemination is also a problem because you don't get the information. A few of you who know that there is an office in every division just responsible for the youth. There is an office for probation officer. Just specifically for you in case you have problems. But we should approach those offices, utilize those offices to make sure that we get information. And that's when you get to know what we are doing as the KCC to fight the problems you are facing as young people. We always plan for you. We have a number of pro programs. Yes, we have a problem of lighting, as it has been mentioned. But the funds, those are the problems. In the Kawempe division, at least we are trying to change the city. Those of you who come from Kawempe, at least, could testify. We changed Bwaise recently because it was also a black spot. It was impossible. It was not safe for the youth. At least I can say such places are now safe for the youth. We are fighting hard to make sure that at least most of the streets are safe for the, for the, for the people, for our residents. We are coming up with ordinances. I've had border border riders and taxi ride drivers. We are coming up with ordinances, bylaws and ordinances. Ordinances, bills are already in, 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 at City Hall. We can't satisfy you, but we are doing a lot. And we join hands with the stakeholders to make sure that at least our cities are safer. I'm looking forward to have such a workshop for parents, because also parents need such a workshop. Safer Cities has its overall objective, which is to build a safe, accountable and inclusive city for and with adolescent girls from all their diversities. Safer Cities has its own three outcomes that we always work to see that we achieve them. The first outcome being increased access and safety to and in public spaces. The second outcome is to increase adolescents' active and meaningful participation in governance and urban programming. And outcome three is increased autonomous mobility in the city. We have done a number of activities. It is not just speaking. We've conducted dialogues, and these are intergenerational dialogues. We've involved duty bearers, parents, the boys, transit operators, because we all know that increasing girls' safety in the cities, it is not one man's army. That's why Safer Cities has a number of stakeholders, because safety is a big issue, and it cannot be done by one person. That's why we have all these people come on board to ensure that girls are safe and included in all urban programming and processes. We know that in our areas and communities, we have areas that are off limit for girls. It is not that someone told them girls do not go to the sports field, girls do not go where, but they just reject themselves automatically because they know what happens in those areas. So on that very view, we've done a number of activities. We've done safety walks. These are things that we do it is a girl-led activity where we move in our communities, we identify safe and unsafe spaces. Because why we do that, it is better for a girl to know that this place is safe, this is not safe. As we are advocating, as the government is doing its processes, it is a first step for a girl to be safe. If she knows that that place is not safe, maybe I can dodge it, I don't go that side, I go this side. 
we've done champions of change. Basically, to make girls stand in the same way boys stand. To make girls believe in themselves. NTV has tonight provided a space for the girls to air out the issues that affect them while they move in the city, move from their homes, going to work or from home to school. But before I reach out to the girls, I want to get from our police. What are you doing to ensure that Kampala is safe for our girls? Please, Honorable Member, you have the platform. Yeah, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, ASP Ndege Magnes, the Regional Child and Family Protection Officer, that is Kampala East. But here I'm representing Madam Mori, the Head of Child and Family at Police Headquarters. You're welcome. Madam, you have posed me a question, what are we doing to help the girls stay safe in the city? We have worked with Plan International several times and we appreciate the services that Plan International is giving us. The other issue is that we are, we, we are talking to parents through community policing to ensure how girls stay safely as they are being kept at home. Then we move to schools. Even those who are not at schools, we call on them. We have some fora that we talk to them how to stay safe amid this, the challenges that they are going through, then I think we also talk to the head teachers at different levels, because we, we also have that fora where teachers are brought on board, how to talk to these children, the parents, the guardians, and all other stakeholders. Then those ones who are offended, we bring the offenders to book in a day. How many cases do you receive of harassment of these girls within the city? Is it so rampant, is it? Yeah, it is rampant compared to the rural setting. But what is most important is that those who don't report, and those who don't report when they don't come, it's very difficult to ascertain the number. Otherwise, when they come, we take up the issue and we take them through the normal processing of the files and ensure those who are being offended the perpetrators are brought to book. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable was available. As in, we girls face a lot of challenges, like while in public spaces, those border border guys, the taxi drivers, and also the conductors tend to harass us in a way that while you're entering the bus, somehow they tend to bad touch you, throw words on you. Even while walking on streets, those people working in markets do harass us in different ways. Some bad touch us and others tend to throw bad words at us, like catcalling us. They have no words that they use that German Jews, maybe my size. When you try to defend yourself or to speak back, they are like, even you're ugly, I was helping you. Oh. Who can marry such a girl like you? To make you feel uncomfortable. And that lowers our self-esteem in which it, it limits us to report. Just because you're like, maybe when a girl is raped, she can't go to the police station to report, being that she will feel out of place in the community. Because you know when you report something, many people will get to know about, it, about that. Because you'll have to And you'll face victimization, not yes. even in school. Yeah. Yes. And when it comes to accessing the health facilities, you go to a youth corner, you'll find an old person is attending to you, which will limit you from saying what exactly you're supposed to do what to say. Just because the person you're meeting is out of the age bracket that should be attending to you. Thank you, madam. Okay, can I have somebody from Boda Boda Body? Or tax, or even bus. Thank you, honorable <laughs> speaker. <laughs> Eric Lawrence, Boda Boda. You write the Boda Boda? From Boise. From Boise, yes. Um, you have had the cry of our young girl <laughs> who exactly. faced harassment from the Boda Boda cyclists. And I've had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Because I've been working with them after a long period of time, three years. Yes, it's true, we admit the things are happening and it's the reality and it is the order of the day when it comes to public spaces like our stages. This is what is happening and it is still happening. Luck enough, we are some of the few who have been transformed through the dialogues that we have had with the adolescents. So you girls. are now a transformed man? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Not only me, we are having also some other few who have represented others because the program 
covered almost 196 participants mm. that we are extending to other places through stage outreaches. Mm. We accepted the girl's cry, and it's true. The problem, Madam Speaker, comes from the mentality of the transit operators or even other men. And uh, this is being supported by the environment around them. In such a way that if any girl is harassed in any way, whether physically, emotionally, the environment around tends to support the act. When you find such culprits, what do you do as a body? Uh, for now, currently, we are having uh, problems with our leadership structure of the border border in the city. We all know that uh, those who were uh, leading us, there was some an overthrow of uh, Tuten that was leading us. So that, that structure was helping us to implement what we recommended. Mm. We are having the rules and regulations guiding us. Maybe they are not yet um, extended or modified, but after some dialogues, we managed to review the traffic rules and regulations in favor of girls and women maybe, and they are special in our offices. And different penalties are being forwarded to the perpetrators. Okay. But currently, still, I establish it we cannot work alone on the ground when our system is still being interfered. Maybe by some other factors that may be political or from any other environment. Okay. But we are trying hard. You're trying hard. As now I request you to go back and take <laughs> the gospel of transformation to other border border cycles. Mm -hmm. I think you have heard the girls speak. Harassment on border border stages, harassment at bus parks, harassment at, uh, at stages where the taxis park. And we are trying to see how we can uh, overcome this. Let's go for a short break. NTV People's Parliament comes back shortly. Yes, welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kampala, chaired by your speaker, Agnes Nanduto, speaking about a very important topic that affects our adolescent girls. And we want to see how we can create Kampala safe for the girls that migrate from rural, maybe we are born here. How can we make their movements, how can we make their, them safe while they are in the city? I would like to thank KCCA and traffic police for the good work they are doing to, to improve on girl safety in the city. And with their good cooperation, <laughs> so far we can see we have road signs now, like mm -hmm. in Boise, and they have at least tried to put up signposts on some roads. But we still have some challenges, most especially again in transit. Mm -hmm. And to tackle these problems, most of it is unskilled transit operators. Mm. We have bad driving skilled drivers which harass girls in transit because if you're not skilled, you have any, any chance to harass any girl because you don't know even what it means to be a transit operator. These transit operators, m many of them don't know that we too have freedom to move freely in the city and not to fear. And what hurts most, these things seem to be normal. And very, and very many girls say, we are used to it, no matter how you dress. Because these people, most of the time, they say that we do, we do dress poorly and indecent. But my honorable speaker, even if you wear a hazard, for sure, you are harassed. <laughs> because they can even say, what are you covering? Are you hiding Chisipi? These are... HIV signs. And if you put on miniskirts, they say that you're searching for men and to, you're not re accepting their advances. So tomorrow you're going to go to Mama Fina and disturb her that you're looking for men. <laughs> they think they are, they are helping us. Uh. The government, KCC and Traffic Police, cooperate with motivated NGOs as planned. Girls and women will celebrate autonomous mobility because we have the right to move 
and most especially when engaged in decision making on the issues that affect our lives in transit. Okay. That's the only way girls will celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. It is really unfortunate. When the girls put on short skirts, you say they are indecent. When they put on uh, hijabu, you still say you are hiding yourself. So, what can our girls do? And by the way, these boys do not only harass these young girls. Even us who are mature, we are harassed. Uh, she has just talked about KCC ensuring that the city is safe. But in some cases, there are dark places where KCC has not put lights. Uh, as Yosh, the mayor has already said, they have tried to put the street lights on the roads. Mm -hmm. But when you enter inside our communities, inside, there are still a lot of darkness and dark corners and one of the safety principle is seen and be seen and we do believe that a lot of adolescent girls uh, work in factories and work daytime and are those who work in night shifts and we do believe that we have a lot of students who study in the evening and they come back in the early night so if the adolescent girls cannot be able to see someone from far away. She can date a challenge. Uh, both of us will date challenges, but I want us to believe that the challenges we boys face are more less than the challenges yeah. girls are facing. Girls are more vulnerable. And I'm humbly requesting TCC authority to really cooperate with the organizations or NGOs who are ready and are passionate to really fight for girls' right to sensitize these people in our communities on the advantages of security lights on houses. Okay. Because many people claim the electricity bills are high, but I want us to believe <laughs> But if one day you are loved or you are Oh, your daughter, your, is, your affected. daughter is affected. <laughs> okay, is thank you, Honourable Member. Yeah. I have mayors around here. I'm honoured and privileged to be here, and I thank you, the House. Yes, Madam Speaker, it's true. At times we do concentrate on the main roads, but again we're appealing to the land road. I mean, the landlords as well, to also put up security light, because the house is yours. And the com you belong to that very community. So we indeed want the landlords also to be vigilant when it comes to security. Have you sensitized them on the We have tried to sensitize them on several issues mm -hmm. and on lights as well. As the mayor stated, the budget at times is not enough to cater for entire Kampala, let's say. But again, when it comes to landlords again, we are appealing to them to come up with that kind of okay. issue. Uh, again, madam, also we have to sensitize the public about the mindset of our people. Our people think that a girl child is, is always there to be, to play around with her. Because ever since I made the Plan International, they inducted us through a safety up and up. So ever since we came up with that, me, whenever I see somebody harassing a woman, I stop my car and I tell him that what... And even this morning as I was coming here. But if the public does not take it upon themselves, or because if they see somebody harassing a woman, we clap and then we laugh together. They call her German Jewish and they German all German Jewish and other <laughs> kind of... I mean, so mm. I'm appealing to the public as well. It's us. We have to bring up a future mother of Uganda. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to bring up a future mother of Uganda when you are harassing? You are a father, you are harassing a, a, a future mother. So what are we going to gain out of that? Mm -hmm. So I'm just appealing to the public to get that mindset. I mean, to get rid of it, and then we forge a way forward. And as I'm concluding, there are also girls living with disabilities Girls living with disabilities are more abused compared to other girls. Because for them, they said, You understand? Mm. So, 
as the muganda or the baganda have a say nti baga nti ataina mukamwana ye kamwana ye ka even girls who are growing up and boys be vigilant be vigilant Get to know where you're passing. Get to know how, I mean, I mean, the people you're associating with, that's when we will save you. But if you think that, ah, we need a Mufubuka who is going to be a future father or a future mother. So thank, thank you, you, madam. Thank you, Mayor. And please, take the gospel around the central Kampala please. to ensure that our girls are safe. I'm really very, uh, very happy with uh, the deputy mayor, what he has said. And really, this is my point and my concern. Because I see really uh, disabled or people with disability are really being violated. And I really thank our stakeholders, the government and uh, KCCA. Really, people, you've done a great work on uh, autonomous mobility in our Kampala city. But however, there are still some loopholes with the people uh, people with a disability. You may find that really we are grateful that you've constructed all the drainage systems in the, uh, in the area. But you find that the uh, people with a disability, they are left with no space, where, nowhere to pass. And people, where do you really expect those people to be happy in their city when uh, someone cannot roll a wheelchair to move out of the city or to move around the place? And this is really, even if you put the lights, where will I see? Where will I, I mean, where will I be moving if you're constructing those drainage systems? At least create a way for also people with disability where they can pass. Okay. You'll find that also in the transit that uh, people with disability, they are left with no space. That person really who is moving in a wheelchair cannot move into the taxi. People with disability cannot be happy in the, I mean, in a cage. I'm, I mean, I'm really very happy with the harm. It's the only building I've seen in the Kampala city with a space for lame people. But others, I don't know. KCC people, you're telling us you have a bill. Please, we am suggesting implement that bill. I think you have heard the girls and the boys speak about their safety and mobility in the city. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we shall hear more from them. Yes, welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kampala City discussing very important issues that affect our girls. Safer cities and autonomous mobility for both our boys and girls, but also for the people living with disabilities. You have heard the girls have talked about it. Many buildings People with disabilities can't access them. By the way, those who are watching us on uh, social media, hashtag safer cities. Uh, the issue I'm going to talk about is sewage and garbage management disposal, plus the trenches. We really thank the KCCA and its management. They have constructed the trenches. Thank you very much. But the trenches don't favor us. The trenches are there, but they are damaged in that when it rains, most, of, most people use it as an advantage to throw in or dump in rubbish. In that when it rains, it, the water flows and it causes to flooding into some slum areas in different places. And it does not favor the girls, not only us, the, but there are those girls with disability. Mm -hmm. The trenches are too big. Most girls, if, even those who are not disabled, they can't access it. Mm. A girl can't jump that big trench which is constructed to access a space where she or he is going to. Okay. And the disab disabled girls, the trenches constructed don't have that slide. In that even if she has a wheelchair, no one can help her to access the, the space. In that the trench is just large and widely open. And I would like to talk about the public toilets. Thank you very much, KCC and your team. The public toilets are there and they are well constructed. But. But, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but, I repeat, but. We have a problem in that there is no space 
it's, bo it's used by both male and female. In that way, the girls we really don't feel comfortable entering a toilet where a man is using it and you're also going to use the same toilet. Mm. And the toilets are there, but they are dirty. There are those toilets we pay for, but they don't take time to clean them. Mm. In that when you have going to use it, a girl can't be able to use a toilet which is dirty. She can easily get diseases such as gonorrhea mm. and can, can affect her life. I don't think a girl can be safe when the community is dirty. Mm. Do you think a girl can be safe? No. No, she cannot. So today we are here to talk about that issue of garbage. Where we come from, it's really worse. Uh, most especially, uh, KCCA, I will thank them. They have tried their best. They constructed trenches, what and what. However, those trenches, they are there, yes, but they lack maintenance. Most of them are broken, are spoiled, but they are not cared for. And another issue is, KCC got some partners who collect garbages, these Kasasiro home clean and others. Eh? They are working, they are doing their best, yes, but still, we need them to reduce eh, on fees they request during that collection process. Mm. Mm. But also those guys who collect garbage can also harass girls. Yes. Very much. Yes, of course, because sometimes when a girl brings garbage on th their cars, mm. you find them her size young, eh, eh, such words. Mm. I'm representing service providers mm. in the marking division. Honorable Speaker, as far as the safety of the girls is concerned, mm, and honorable members who are here, honestly, you can believe that the sector provides jobs for the girls. That is the service provider. Mm. We give jobs, we create jobs for girls, that is true. And three quarters of the girls work in our places, in bars, lodges, in restaurants. But people, because focus, they focus on get, getting money, they don't care the conditions that the girls work from. We don't care. For me, I've opened up my and business. And even their safety back yeah. to their homes. I've opened up my business. I want money. So whether you are safe or you are harassed, I don't care. Before Plan International intervened in our sector, we were rotten. I must say so. We were minding our own business. But like Plan International opened our eyes and we realized that we were not supporting our girls at all. We were not ensuring their security while at the places of work. And we didn't care whether they go back late in the night, whether they are paid on time or not. But as I speak, the few people we have interacted with, we have managed to hold dialogues with our fellow service providers to address the concerns of the girls who are able even to interact with the girls who work in our places to hear from them what they go through. Uh, what we have done again is we carried out a survey. Is it true these girls are going through hardships? Um, I cannot talk to a big pl about a big place like here, but when you come to slum areas, we have bars there, and I um, can assure you, girls don't have safe places. Washrooms are not provided at all. So girls suffer. They either go and hide behind the walls to help themselves or not. But we have set up regulations or bylaws calling upon other service providers to intervene to ensure that they provide washrooms for the girls to be safe. Um, another issue that we have come up with is calling upon even those who have big hotels and big lodges to come on board. They shouldn't live only us. You see the girls very smart in their places, but they are not attended to. They are not given platforms to express their concerns. They are left out and they are not given support during work time. So we are coming up with the bylaws say, how can we support girls, especially who work up to so late? Can we provide 
room for them to stay okay. and then they, they access their homes okay. ahead. As I wind up, there's, there's our, our system, I'm sure there are regulations and policies that govern uh, bars and lodges and other entertainment Even uh, places. Even discotheques yeah. in, in yes. different areas. And sports betting, but they are very weak. I'm telling you the truth, they are very weak. We are not followed up. I don't know the person who is concerned with that. We are not followed up. We are not, they, we, they don't do routine checkups to ensure that people who access the places are safe. Even the girls who are working there okay. are safe. So we are calling upon um, stakeholders or whoever is concerned to strengthen the regulations and policies to okay. enable our girls to work in safe places. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Minister. you. Plan International, have you engaged the big hotels, please? Plan International Uganda, especially through the youth economic empowerment programs we are running, we purpose to work with both government and the private sector to ensure safe safety at the workplace. So we are keen to work with uh, all actors, and particularly yeah. the private sector. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are doing it, we may not have uh, reached out, say, to uh, many of them, yeah. but we have an intention to do so. Okay. And incidentally, with this journey of working with the private sector, one of the learnings I've got is that they are interested. They are, they are equally interested in working on ad addressing issues that affect children and young people mm. but at times they don't know how to go around it okay. and at times there is also the perception issue uh, civil society and the private sector we need also to work on the mindset because I've worked on this kind of uh, arrangement uh, over the last four or five years mm. I've noted that we tend to have a perception if you are from the civil society, you have a perception that, like uh, um, Honorable Speaker, uh, the earlier speaker mentioned, w civil society has a perception that the private sector is out to reap profits, nothing else. So once you have that perception, you close the opportunity for dialogue to improve. Mm. And of course, also on the other side, the counterparts in the private sector, at times there is a tendency to have a perception that the civil society is, uh, they are coming to me to tell lots of stories. Okay. So again, if that person has that perception, you close out on the dialogue. But okay. certainly, we are moving with the journey of collaboration okay. and equally working with the private sector hmm. to develop solutions for supporting children and young people. Um, Madam Speaker, we are talking about a safer city. I think we need to understand what a safer city looks like or uh, the, urban, the, ban the urban areas uh, at large. And not only in the transport sector, but also in all potential avenues of abuse. Um, Madam Speaker, we have girls who have migrated from rural areas to the city to seek for domestic work. And most times these girls suffer silently. Uh, because they do not know the right platform to report their abuse. Um, Madam Speaker, there are good offices in place uh, which handle issues affecting the adolescent girls. For example, we have the probation office. Yeah. However, um, the information is lacking to the girl child. And Madam Speaker, I appreciate what Plan International is doing, but uh, I appeal to them to do more awareness creation, especially to the girl child. That is all I have to say, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Esther Namboka is my name, and I'm a partner working with Girls Forum International uh, in partnership with Plan International on safety for girls in Mark India Division. Um, I'm talking about two issues. The first one is we can only reduce the vulnerability of these adolescent girls by skilling them. Because it is through their vulnerability that they are tempted by all the idle men around the villages. So as Plan International, together with the implementing partners, the Girls Forum, we have come up with a new tool of skilling 
the girls so that you can economically empower them so that their reliance is not only in the hands of the men who actually use them but they can also uh, get empowered financially number two um safer cities for girls is only reaching out for adolescent girls but we need to expand this project to reach other more cities and more girls as the madam speaker you mentioned that it's not only the girls that are going through insecurity but even me a woman at my age with my fallen breasts with my three children i am also <laughs> harassed yes. as i am going to board a taxi there is a man who's saying mama <laughs> even i'm pregnant <laughs> when i am pregnant they will announce for me how i slept with the man so the results are out mm. so i think safety has to be safety has to be expanded especially also uh, uh insecurity in universities and higher institutions of learning it is too high yes. madam speaker uh one of these days you need to get up and go to areas like casablanca areas like kabalagala around uh Deposh, around the K KIU, Capital Pub, you will find girls who are squatting by the roadsides. But these girls are just coming out from the bar. People are going to work. But the university girls are getting out from the bar. They are unconscious and they are being supported by the waitresses and the owners of the bar because they have, closed, they have to close their place to prepare for the evening. But the person who is very happy to receive this unconscious girl is the Boda Boda rider is the special hire, is the taxi. But remember, this girl is vulnerable. They even support them by holding their two hands on the pitchy pitchy. Remember that she's unstable. The question is, where do our men take our girls? Mm -hmm. So I call upon also uh, the service providers. If you're owning a bar, you're owning uh, a hotel, it is your responsibility to take care of your of your client mm -hmm. until when she has sobered up. But you also need to exp uh, sensitize the university girls and the uh, higher institutions of learning to take care of themselves, but the program needs to extend to also these other institutions. Okay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really thank Plan International. They are doing their best to ensure that we create safer Kampala for our girls and also have safe mobility for people with disabilities. If we continue talking about this topic, we shall talk until the cows come back home. But because of the importance of this topic, we are extending it to next week when we shall hear more from the stakeholders, the bar owners, the hotel owners, even the border border cyclists and bus operators, everybody, everybody who is a stakeholder within this uh, uh, service will be able to give us suggestions and solutions on how to keep our girls safe in the city. I am your speaker, Agnes Nandutu, and I aspire to inspire you before I expire. With powers conferred upon me as the speaker of People's Parliament, I adjourn this house until next Saturday when we shall continue with the same topic. Views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.